People are dying in the Eastern Cape. They can't reach hospitals in emergency situations. There aren't enough ambulances to assist them. Those in rural areas are being hit the worst. Bad roads and vast distances stand between them and healthcare. This is Nolibele Debe. With each slow, methodical step she takes, Nolibele experiences immense pain. She suffers from arthritis, a disease that causes her joints to be painful and inflamed. Nolibele lives in Kileni village in the Eastern Cape. There are residents here as old as 70 years who say they've never seen an ambulance. Nolibele is worried that one day her arthritis will make her immobile. She fears that there will be no ambulance to respond to her in a medical emergency. This village is not easily accessible by car or by public transport. By national standards, the Eastern Cape has the least developed road network. Only 17% of the roads are surfaced. This makes accessing healthcare incredibly difficult for the residents of these far-flung rural villages. Nolibele and others like her rely heavily on community healthcare workers to monitor their health. Noti Kanti Futi is a home-based care worker who frequently visits the elderly and the sick of this village. Noti Kanti encourages Nolibele to stretch to help her alleviate the painful symptoms of her arthritis. The normal joint has got a bone and that bone is covered by cartilage. And as soon as that cartilage, that layer is eroded, the bone ends are bearing weight and they have to rub against each other. And that is very painful. Noli Bele struggles to even sit in a chair and put her shoes on. But once a month, she must traverse hills and long stretches of land by foot to reach her nearest hospital. At Madhualeni Hospital, she attends a chronic pain management session and collects her medication. The round trip is almost 13 hours long and takes a heavy toll on Nolibele's already pain-ridden body. She walks slowly, propped up by her walking stick, riddled with pain. For her, this walk is not only long but grueling. With each agonizing step, Nolibele's joints are grinding against each other, with no cartilage to cushion the blow. It's some activity which is most probably going to accelerate the degeneration. In other words, making her osteoarthritis worse and worse. I am Zimbalo on our light. The young figure behind cutters and cone wood tea, I am a light tongue. The bone wood tea and a bad tumble by by a batch. What I am going to send if I send out that is your sugar. What a gold band is by man sit. They have bank and the amber. Go and dine a shy over cool of the overfunner and bambele lap. After this long walk, Nolibele has to contend with crossing the Dludla River. This single canoe services the entire community. She's ferried across the river for fee of eight rand. In bad weather, this river stands between Nolibele and her treatment. She can't attend her chronic pain management appointment when the river is too dangerous to cross. 
planned patient transport takes patients from one health facility to another. Currently, there are 138 vehicles in the Eastern Cape to do this. But this service doesn't help Noli Bele get to the hospital from her home. Some people feel this planned patient transport service should be extended to collect patients directly from their homes. This would spare someone like Noli Bele this long and strenuous journey by foot. Nofundile Sipatana suffers from epilepsy, a disorder of the brain that causes fits. These seizures can cause her to black out and lose control over her body. When this happens, she desperately needs the help of an ambulance to reach the nearest hospital. But Nofundile does not receive this assistance. <laughs> Nofundile's need to get to the hospital and back is bankrupting her family. She supports this household of 11 people. Her adult children assist her with some basic food items, but in terms of money in hand, she only has access to a meagre 330 rand a month, the child support grant she receives for her youngest daughter. Doctors recommend calling an ambulance when a person experiences seizures that last longer than six minutes. But ambulances are scarce here in Kaleni village in the Eastern Cape. The national standard of one ambulance per 10,000 people means the province should have roughly 650 vehicles. But the Eastern Cape's entire operational ambulance fleet is about half of that, only 353. To make matters worse, 36 of these are being repaired, so there are only 317 ambulances to respond to the medical emergencies of six and a half million people. Because of this dire lack of ambulances, communities are forced to make their own plan. In a desperate attempt to save lives, their much needed social grant money is often spent on hiring private vehicles. <laughs> When Nofundile finally wakes up in her hospital bed, she has survived the seizures but is considerably poorer. Loan sharks here charge 200 rand interest on a loan of 600 rand. So after each hospital visit, Nofundile is 800 rand in debt. Dagan Eager, a health researcher with the Rural Health Advocacy Project, says this out-of-pocket expenditure takes food out of people's mouths. In that emergency, when an ambulance should be taking somebody to the hospital free of charge, people are having to find 800 rand. And you can imagine that in a household where, where the majority of their budget is spent on food and then the majority of that budget then goes to, to a single trip um, to a facility, 
that they're going to have to find the money for food and, and other basic um, resources from somewhere else. Nofundile looks after her brother's cows, but she no longer owns livestock of her own. Selling off two of her sheep used to earn her 600 rand, which could pay for one journey to the hospital. Nofundile's financial predicament is common throughout the Eastern Cape. In nearby Bazana village, we found this elderly woman who runs a micro-lending facility from her home. As a loan shark, she makes a living of people's desperate need to access extra money. When a client like Nofundile borrows money from her, she confiscates their social security card, identity booklet and bank card. According to the National Credit Act, this is illegal. And very often they actually have the pins to those cards. So what we are seeing is, is that the loan shark has, has control of the card and, and the pin and is actually withdrawing the child support grant or the old age pension as soon as it comes into the account. So that person doesn't even have access to that, that grant. <laughs> She is able to earn 3,000 rand a month from being a loan shark and is now able to support her three children. But she knows this is only possible because people are desperate to reach healthcare in emergency situations. We see it time and time again that people are required to take measures to, to just get to a facility that push them further into poverty. And, and, and that's why we speak about something like emergency medical services as a as a human rights abuse, a crisis in healthcare when it's not provided because it is something that the constitution provides for and, and the government should be delivering. Nofundile has become all too familiar with the debt that accompanies a medical emergency. Because of her epilepsy and the cost of getting to hospital, her children often go hungry. <laughs> To make a Sam's broad smile and warm personality are captured here in these old photographs. Her siblings, Tolisile and Nolusapo, are reminiscing about all the happy memories they shared together. 
But not all the memories are positive. Together they witness Tomeka's final days, lying on this very bed, writhing in pain and covered in bed sores. Tomeka was seriously ill and needed emergency medical assistance. By state of health, it was deteriorating. As I said, I remember when I was in the pila, I was in the ambulance. I was in the ambulance. I was in the ambulance. Tameka was HIV positive and had contracted tuberculosis. Although she was on antiretroviral treatment and TB medication, she was getting worse rather than better. She had also started to have seizures, a new symptom that alarmed her family. Yes, I'm busy. 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 i Ambulance and go there are only 52 ambulances available for roughly 900,000 people that live in this district. So the ambulance, you know, you want to get on, I'm not going to shut it. Let me buy a light, come to my guy from an ambulance up. Five days after Olisile's first phone call to the EMS call center, an ambulance finally arrived, but it was an empty shell without even a stretcher. Tameka's family carried her down this road in the pouring rain because the ambulance was not able to navigate the uneven road. Only 56 of the province's ambulances have 4x4 off-roading capability. This means only 16% can navigate roads like this one leading to their home. system <laughs> In the foot and come by sit on the farm by party, the patient we supper. A fan by one by health, then the Amakabong Guab. Bangaban the city. The ambulance I to Melay or Elico or Togo. Ingena trip, Ingena oxygen. Enge echo na long do turn bang a simva. I night a patient bang a simva. So Yabarandigo Usuga up, we are tatua. Usua MBL in the combo hospital. We are born as a bibs when anger tating ye. And when I'm going to linger park at. But after this long, agonizing wait for an ambulance, Polisile was told the hospital could not treat Tameka and that he should take her home. By now, she was teetering on the brink of death. Oh, cousin, where's the happy guy? Yeah, as I'm strong about who Tomeka was transported from the clinic to Freya Hospital. By now she was fainting and having frequent epileptic fits. But by the time she received medical care at the hospital, it was too late to save her life. Twelve days passed between Polisile's first desperate call to the ambulance and Tumeka's eventual death. 
Unyangwa kum to get twice I'll find a little young and conda by Yabu Sindhi Sabum. It says lives to be treated at the right time. Was that your baby in the bubbles? It wasn't easy, it was difficult. Um, shall strong or cool out, and could you make a shell of a bang of his lambs a good for man, and the bank one that changes in the near car, not you or no one, and that's a figure in my affair. First of October, two thousand and one. Now look, the other night, I pull my fire again. That was her last day. Nolu Sapo and Kolisile shared the tragic story of Tumeka's death with the South African Human Rights Commission. The commission held a hearing into the state of emergency medical services in the Eastern Cape. The constitution says that no one may be denied medical treatment, and it's the job of the commission to check up on whether people are receiving these rights. Our constitution talks about human dignity as uh, integral to each and every one of us. And yet everything that we heard yesterday was how the lack of emergency medical services, how that attacks human dignity and undermines human dignity. Um, I, I really feel that uh, it is very painful when somebody asks for help and the help does not come. Ambulances to us in the department is really asking for help. And it is absolutely very important that when help is asked for, somebody must respond. Nobody should not have an ambulance within four hours. It just doesn't matter whatever situation. Dr. Bengashe says the ambulance response time should be no longer than 15 minutes in urban areas and 45 minutes in rural areas. But Nolusapo and Kloricile waited neither 45 minutes nor four hours, but five whole days for an ambulance to respond to Tameka's plea for help. They are not alone. At the hearing, community members from across the province shared similar stories of pain, suffering and loss. Almost everyone in the room raised their hand when asked to indicate who has been negatively affected by non-responsive ambulances. I, I had the information that I was not the only person who felt the pain. The whole province is feeling the pain and it is going to feel the pain even tomorrow until there is the solution. The Commission is compiling a report that will make recommendations to the Eastern Cape Department of Health on measures that should be taken to strengthen the EMS system. But for Tolisile and Nolusapo, these changes will come too late. Robbed of their sister, they visit her grave to pay their respects. Weighing heavily on their minds is the thought that Tameka could have been saved by a faster ambulance response. Since her death, the province has acquired 110 new vehicles, increasing its general ambulance fleet by about 45%. But despite this increase, the ambulance fleet is still half the size it should be to comply with the national norm. Ambulance. I, I, I call right, London.